Hey, hey everyone, my name is Khaled Sabri and I'm here to show and illustrate what me and my friend Mohamed Imad have been working on in the research paper Road Traffic Accident Detection Based on Crash Estimation. But before we dive into that, we need to ask one question. What do we want to solve here? We want to detect vehicle accidents by using CCTV cameras that are installed on the roads. But why? Why is that? Because people's lives matter. And the officials say that if we could shorten the time between the occurrence of the accident and the first report on it, then we will be able to save some of injured lives. But why now? Why at this time? From my opinion, because of three points. First, we now have the technology. We now have enough processing power to process this enormous amount of data. And the second point is, we now have so many CCTV cameras already installed on the roads. For example, in China, they have 500 million cameras. And the third point is, we now have a system. We now have a reliable, a robust, and an accurate system. So let's take a quick look at the recent work in this area. The work done for this problem was in two directions. One is using deep learning approach. Two is using feature extraction. So we have investigated the deep learning approach, but the results of this approach were actually so bad, as this is hard a problem to be solved in current days using deep learning. Why? Because there is no sufficient data for accidents, and the accidents itself are stochastic. So you need very and very large data set before you propose the system to be reliable. So we went for the feature extraction approach. And many research papers suggested a framework for accident detection, which starts with the detection module, which detects vehicles on the frames, then goes to the tracking module to track these vehicles, and lastly, the crash detection module, which, for example, one prominent work have used the violent flow descriptor which really had got through alarms, but huge false alarms that made the system unreliable. So we started working on how to decrease these false alarms until we found another algorithms to detect the crash, which we name it crash estimation module. So our final framework is that detection, then tracking and end with crash estimation. In detection module, we use the famous deep neural network called YOLO. It is fast and accurate in detection. Input to this module is one second, and the one second contains 30 frames. We only process in YOLO the first frame and send the rest to the tracking module. The tracking module. In this module, we try two algorithms for tracking, one of which was Locus Canadi Tracker. It was a slow and results in bad tracking, as it depends on corners of the vehicles as features to track, which when an occlusion occurs, it loses its focus. So we want for another tracking algorithm called MOSI which is fast and accurate and better in occlusions and rotations. The input to this module is the output of the detection module, which is one with the detected vehicles and 29 frames to track these vehicles in them. The output of this module consists of an object for every vehicle storing the positions in a pixel unit and sending only the object to the next module. Now, let's dive into our work, the algorithms to detect the crash. I found it is better to list the whole steps at the start and go in depth in later. So, first, we need to estimate the speed of the vehicles. Second, estimate the future positions for the vehicles. And third point is compare the average speed for each vehicle at specific frame number. And the fourth point is we need to measure the distance between the estimated future centers. And lastly, compare the estimated future center to the actual future center. So let's start with the first algorithm, the speed estimation. We need first to estimate the speed of the vehicles, but it is not a trivial process as it might sound, as we deal with generic CCTV cameras that have different resolutions and capture the view with different scale or hang it in different angles. That is why we must measure the speed with different unit other than the pixel unit. So we have two problems here when we try to estimate the speed. The first is the camera resolution. As we may have some cameras with HD quality, and others with full or ultra HD resolution. To solve this, you need to downscale or upscale your input to the system with a static resolution. The second problem is the camera shot scale. If the camera shot is close to the street, then it will show that the vehicles are moving faster than the vehicles that are captured by camera taking a wide or a long shot. So we apply these two equations to solve this problem. As you can see, we multiply the speed by a coefficient to change the speed unit from pixel unit to scaled unit. 
So here in the coefficient, you can see that whenever the vehicle area increases, which means that the camera is taking a close shot, then the speed will be slower. But also we are taking into the consideration the different types of vehicles as the motorcycle area will appear less than truck area at all cases, which is handled by the alpha symbol a hyperparameter that is set different to each type of vehicle. You can also see from equations that we handled the different types of resolutions. The estimated speed from this equation was very good, especially to our problem here. So let's go to the second algorithm, the estimated center. We now have the exact positions for certain frames. We need to estimate the future center after 10 frames. Let's take an example. If the vehicle is in frame number 11, we need to know where it will be after 10 frames from now, which means where the estimated future center is at frame number 21. And solution for that is simple at this point, as we will get the average of the past 10 frames in x-axis and y-axis and will estimate where it will be. You will notice that the array of estimated positions must have the first 15 positions with value equals 0. And that is because we cannot estimate the, where the vehicle will be in frame number 11 with only one frame. So to solve this, the system will need to detect vehicles every half second and send 30 frames as usual to the tracking, with no change to the next modules. From now on, the next algorithms, you will have to implement them in order. But first, we will need to define an important thing. We will not investigate in images or footages. We will investigate in case. So what is a case? A case is vehicle A with vehicle B at frame number X. So we will compare every two vehicles with each other and every two vehicles we will compare them at specific number and either to tell this is an accident or not. So let's start with the third algorithm comparing average speed of each two vehicles. In this step, we need to limit cases that could cause an accident by the speed. So, if both vehicles are moving slowly or stopped, then we will limit this case as it won't make an accident as their speed wouldn't allow them to do so. But if one of them, or both of them, are moving above the speed limit, then it could cause an accident to each other. So, it will go to the fourth algorithm. After this module, only high speed cases will be investigated. This module helps a lot in improving performance. As you can see in the photo in the traffic jam, the system will limit those possibilities of a crash at this step and will not go further. The fourth algorithm, measuring the distance between the estimated future centers. Why do we need that? As we need to limit cases where the vehicles will not meet close to each other in the future. But why did we use the estimated future? Why didn't we use the current positions? The answer is, the two vehicles may be at the current position away from each other, but with the high speed of the two, the estimate after 10 frames will be close to each other, and it may cause a crash. So according to this algorithm, in the photo, you can calculate the limit value by the two vehicles by the diameters. If it is below, then a crash may occur, and if not, then they will be away from each other in the future. After this module, only high speed and close to each other cases will be investigated. The fifth and last algorithm compares the distance of future and actual center. At this stage or at this point, high speed vehicles and close range to each other will report on an accident. But what if the camera angle is not perpendicular on the road, which is most of the CCTV cameras are? Then an occlusion will occur and will show that this is a crash. To solve this, we will calculate the difference between the estimated future and the actual position for each two vehicles in a specific case. And, and, and as we investigate in a case, we will take the biggest difference which will refer to the biggest error from the two vehicles. If the biggest error is bigger than half the distance of the estimated future centers for both vehicles, then it is a crash. If below, then it is not a crash. Take a second look that we have used the estimated future center and not using the actual center at this frame. And that is because the actual center, if an accident occurs, will be wrong as the estimated future will get us results before an accident occurs. At this point, we can say all the cases that reach after the last algorithm are accidents and report in them. But we also thought of another module to add, which is called crash detection, and using, as we said earlier, an algorithm called a violent flow descriptor, which introduced in a research paper called real-time violence detection in video, and used from the same authors in a research paper for accident detection called fast car crash detection in video. 
We said earlier that this algorithm results in good true alarms, but has huge false alarms that made the system unreliable to use. So after adding our module crash detail estimation, we limited these huge false alarms and sent to the violent flow descriptor true alarms with very few false alarms. I will talk about the comparison later, but now let's talk about performance improvements. So, first point, in the tracking module, we modified the algorithms a little bit to work with our problem efficiently. So we introduced an algorithm called Track Compensated Frame Interpolation, which you won't need to track a vehicle for each frame, especially if it is stopped or moving slowly in a congested roads. And for, the estimate, and for that, estimate the frames where it will be. And for the sake of this time, of this presentation time, I can't cover it here, but I wrote in detail in the research paper as this helped to increase the tracking module performance to double, especially in congested roads. Second point, separate the detection module to its own process, as the detection depends on GPU, so at this point the CPU will stay idle, so it's better to work on other modules and not wait for the results of detection. Third point, order the last three algorithms as specified in this presentation, or the research paper, as we start first by limiting the high speed cases, then close to each other cases, then cases where a vehicle partially covers another vehicle, so if we apply, if you apply these algorithms out, uh, out of order, it will decrease the performance by a lot. Now it is time to compare our framework to others. From a curiosity point of view, our framework beats all previous works by a big margin. We had slightly better accuracy from crash estimation plus violent flow descriptor than crash estimation only, but the recall percentage is much different. From performance point of view, we were able to test three frameworks, violent flow descriptor only and crash estimation only and both of them. The worst toward the violent flow descriptor only, because it doesn't filter any footages and process them all. The past performance with the crash estimation only. We were, we were able to achieve real-time performance on our normal laptops. Finally, I need you to take a quick look at the project itself. You can see some outputs and test by yourself. We provided also an easy way to run test videos without using YOLO or GPU. You can also see the, see the data set we have collected from YouTube compilation videos and also you can see the output of the system from different type of accidents. You can go and download the project from this link. And before I go, I want to thank the conference committee for allowing me to show the work that I and my friend made. I also want to thank my professor Naveen Darwish for her support and I want to thank you all for listening. Thank you.